Gratam Felix Tempest Explosion! <laughs> Wait, that's Gregorian, not Latin shit. Right, right. Wait, are they the same thing? I don't I know. So. Welcome back, everybody. It's Monday again. No, it's Wednesday again. <laughs> does it really matter? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. No. Uh, but it does matter for the art news. So we want to tell you what's going on in the art world. We'll chat a little bit about that. And today we have a special co-host. Rebecca Batts is back. Yay. How you been? I'm good. You good? You good? You been yeah. up to anything exciting lately? Uh, well, I just have had the show here the other day that uh, was a, a memorial show for my best friend that passed last year. Yeah, condolences. How did you think it went? Uh, it was good. It was a little overwhelming. There was a lot of was people it? that kept trying to just like hold me, and I was like, get get off, <laughs> get off now. Right. You're like, uh, you can send me a nice basket of right. flowers instead of uh, touch me. Right. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Overstimmed. That makes sense. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the show? Uh, about your friend? or? Well, I think it was everything she wanted. You know, it was like less traditional art show and more just uh, people honor, honoring her. Yeah, and getting together and getting a little twisted. Yeah, we did some really nice prints of the of the artwork here. Uh, sold a couple of these like limited edition boys of this nice. piece right here. Mm -hmm. Check it out. This is Jasmine. Uh, for Jasmine. Was she a partner in making art with you? Oh, Sahaj or Jasmine? Jasmine. Uh, well, in certain respects, like she and I had a collective where we threw events all the time. Oh, yeah? So, yeah, we would throw parties at places like Short Stories or like The Woods, like a bunch of Brooklyn spots. Oh, uh, cool. What was then, the series called? Uh, well, our collective was called Gone Girls, and then we would name each party a different thing, and it would be a theme. Like one would be like... Uh, cowboys and rock stars and then like the next would be like one of her birthdays was like a gemini yearbook and everyone had to come dressed as like a different famous gemini oh, that's and cool. i came dressed as like trippy red trippy reds <laughs> yeah <laughs> like gemini? drew all the face tattoos on myself that's funny you like you know trippy red no i don't you don't know trippy red i don't know gotta get hip with it i man. feel bad it kind of no. just looks like some slime if it was like personified wow <laughs> Shots fired. Wow. That, uh, is that, are they better looking than the Island Boys, at least? Oh, yeah. I would say so. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> little, you know they, like, kiss and stuff now? They have, like, a whole no, I saw fans. that. I saw that, too. I thought there was a theory he that they were, like, on over. the Jeffrey Epstein Island, too, I but saw I'm those not pictures. sure. I that, too. I saw that. <laughs> Anything is possible with those cats, man. Right. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, their, their rise to fame was really interesting, you know? And they're, it's just such a weird world we live in now right. where... These dudes uh, become super famous and like everybody's obsessed with them, but they're kind of lol cows, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, I think 100%. that's what it takes to trend these days. Do you have to be a lol, a lol yeah. cow? You can't be like a serious person. They don't even look human anymore. <laughs> right. I mean, they barely <laughs> look, true. they look like lizard people. Yeah, they they, they really like um, popularize the island boy aesthetic. Right. You know, they've got their looks going on. It's that's just like that's Floridian trash. Right. So that's a good segue. Speaking Oof. of uh, aesthetics, one of the pieces of news uh, going around right now is that Art Basel, everyone's favorite art fair, has branched into the luxury goods market, into the lifestyle brand, and they're making some high-end clothing. Yeah, we could you show this. some pictures, and um, if that's what you call high-end, and God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Good tight. Good tight. Yeah, for uh, for listeners, for audio only listeners, which by the way, you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you don't like watching on YouTube. Uh, but it is a pretty plain white t shirt with just some graphic letters it that just say like art. art and then little words around it. Does like it even almost say like Basel? a periodic table, like but yeah. just like art. Yeah, art periodic table. It's it's got a very kind of actually in my opinion, dated graphic design look to it. I was going to yeah. say elementary school style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, actually, one of my favorite, I wish I could remember his name. Maybe I'll remember it to put later in. But um, there's this designer who kind of like broke a lot of the rules about typesetting and created this really chaotic look for magazine layouts. And it was really influential. And I feel like I'm looking at it here. This is like similar influence for it. And it, it really just is all about like, spreading things out differently, but it, it feels dated to me a little bit. That feels really like um, 2000s. You yeah. Know? Like earlier. I would earlier. even say like late 90s. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it, I graduated high school uh, 97, and I feel like 
that's basically what my class would have on graduation day. <laughs> yeah. It did feel 90s because like it feels almost like when I was in the yearbook club in middle school, what the graphics looked like from what I had to choose from. Oh, right. right, right. All right. Well, there's a consensus here. We don't like it. <laughs> We're just going to be haters about everything. <laughs> but I mean, you know, there's a lot of luxury stuff. I might need it, though. Yeah, it's funny the way the article framed it, too, because they were like, they're moving into the luxury market. And I'm like, it's the heart basil. It's just a hoodie. And all, it's, I, it's just a hoodie. <laughs> like it's, maybe if it was like a suitcase or something. Right, like a really nice Louis Vuitton yeah. like box. You it's know? like a really titanium suitcase with just art on it. Like that'd be one thing. Like a suitcase right. like shaped like a crate. Yeah. Right. Oh, that our crate. Cool. That would be cute. No, don't give them ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Subscribe to us, Art Basil, and take all our ideas. <laughs> Not but, mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's it's weird to me because it's like they're making this move where like, oh, they, they framed it in a way that was like, we're making a move into the luxury sector. And, and they're like, it's a smart move. And it's like, well, it's an art fair. Like, right. I don't know how more and luxury like not a good you one. get. They're trying to squeeze that name for every penny it's worth. I guess so. I so. You said something interesting when we were chatting a little bit. Uh, you said, the, like, because <laughs> nobody's going to the fair. What do you think yeah, about Art nobody Basel? nobody goes to the convention. Because there's uh, also, like, two different conventions. There's the right. Art Basel one. And then there's also, uh, I forget the name of the other one. But I've gone to the other one more than I've gone to the actual Art Basel one. Oh, okay. And every time I go to Art Basel. Sad. Satellite? Yeah, satellite. Yeah. And then every time I do go, nobody actually goes to see any shows or anything. They just go mm. for the parties straight up. Right, right. That's kind of the, the vibe I got about Art Basel is that it was just about partying. You go there, you do a bunch of blow, get in a, well, a pool. Especially in the Windwood. Yeah, yeah in Windwood. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's End up in spot. some warehouse and like... What I do like about Art Basel is like there's everyone on the streets everywhere. It kind of reminds me of like South by Southwest. Like if they, oh yeah, you know, like I like that. Do you ever participate or go to Bushwick Open Studios? Oh yeah, actually. Yeah, that's kind of that vibe now mm -hmm. too. It's like I a lot like of people that. walking around. Uh, I think it's it's pretty fascinating to see that expand and grow and become such a huge thing. But I feel like it's kind of. I don't know if it's died down a little bit lately. With the Bushwick Open Studios? Yeah. I think uh, with know. COVID it died down a bit, but it's like picked back up like as of like last year. Yeah. It used to be such more uh, like a community thing where it wasn't, it wasn't like an organization. Mm -hmm. It was literally just a thing that artists did and they would like put out a newsletter and you would just say, my studio is open, get right. on a little piece of paper. And now they're trying to like, uh, you know, make it more official. I guess it's actually like an org, an org now. I was attacked by them. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's why? right. Because uh, I was doing it for years with no problem, you know, not paying in. And then right. all of a sudden, someone saw that I was having a show during that time that wasn't registered with them, and they started to try to shake me down. Oh, oh yeah. And then they said, because I didn't pay in, I was whitewashing oh. Bushwick. Oh, you? Yeah. You, you bit of, you, you're, like, you're like the most Bushwick person I know. And so I just to avoid any problems. And then I started hearing, you know, similar stories with uh, Bushwick Open Studios and other people. And really? I'm like, well, there seems to be something funky going on. So I just removed myself from that Wait, whole whitewashing as in like you are erasing their culture and replacing it with white people. Whitewashing? That like kind of they've whitewashing? already done like for the past 10, 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> also, I tried to explain to them. I was like, not that they really cared. I was like, my grandma survived the Holocaust, then moved to New York City and lived in Bushwick in like, yeah. like the 40s and the 50s. So like, so what are you talking about? They think you're a transplant off the boat from Iowa, Idaho, I guess. Right. Paying nine thousand dollars a month. I don't, I don't know. Also, God forbid you have your studio open to the public for whenever right. you want. Well, they, it's a shakedown thing. They want money. Yeah, they, a lot of stuff's a shakedown. It seems. Mm -hmm. I got a yeah. call from. Oh, I got a text the other day. Have you ever heard of Nine Nine Casting? I feel like I have. You probably have. I feel like I've seen a Reddit thread on it too. You oh, there's definitely Reddit <laughs> threads on it. Uh, this is a thing that actually Vice made a whole like documentary on it a long time ago. And nine, nine casting is like totally a bait and switch kind of scammy vibe un agency. They call themselves. Mm -hmm. So they're basically the idea is that you, you get, I got a cold text from somebody I've never talked to. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of this person. And they go, uh, all these big things are casting recently. You know, we need like, we want to get you in for an audition for an open call on two, uh, at two or 4 PM tomorrow, which can you do? And I'm like, who is this? Right. You know, what? And they're like, this is Kim from Nine Nine. Uh, we're an agency and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, okay. I've heard of you. Please remove my number from your list. I got one today, but from a different company. Actually. Yeah. But the idea is that like they, it, 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 they kind of like, it, I get it. Like we actually sort of have some things in common with Nine Nine and that 
we are a place to help support people who are ambitious and starting out and want to get a place to show, want to help with their production, want to learn more. You know, we're all about that. But the difference is like, I'm not cold calling artists and go, hey, do you want to make a million dollars in art tomorrow? Right. Sign up for this pitch meeting where I'm going to tell you you need to give me $500. It's like some snake oil kind of salesman. What they do is they get you in a, they, they hype you up. They get you in this meeting to talk to you about what they do. Then you pay a $500 fee, a $39 a month fee. On top of that, you pay for your photos, your headshots, uh -huh. which they recommend you take. Obviously, they send you to their photographer. Uh, you pay for the headshots. You pay for all this stuff. And then at the end of the day, you know, they're helping supposedly to find you opportunities to then, you know, take your headshots and all the stuff you've been doing with them to shop you around. And like this stuff's not free. So like somebody's got to pay for this stuff. And I understand it. I think the nefarious business practices come in when the fact that they're like they're definitely cold calling people, as evidenced by my text. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're saying like all these they're dropping a lot of big names and they're doing this assumptive thing. Like anytime someone does this to you, like watch out. If you're there like, oh, we have this great opportunity. Which one are you, which one are you going to do? Right. Like which one? And I was like, who is this? And I'm like, they're Kim from nine, nine. They're like, so which, which day, which, which time do you want tomorrow? Right. Trying and to I'm make like, it, like no, <laughs> yeah, they just keep mm -hmm. pressing they, and they keep pressing and pressing. And if you look into the, all these reviews and like that old vice documentary, they basically say that, uh, once you sign up and give them their money, they just stop responding to you. Yeah, it's and crazy it's like, that it's you. made its way into like my adult way because as a kid, there were like in, growing up in New York, so many kids I knew would go to agencies like this, yeah, and they'd have to pay for their headshots, yeah. pay for all of this stuff, and then where did they ever go? Like there was like no work ever taken. Sure, I mean it's a tough field. It's, it might even be harder than art because um, mm. there's that guy. I love that story about um, the guy from The Office. Which one? Uh, John, Jim, Jim. Oh, I love him. Yeah, Cran John Kranskin or whatever his name is. He was saying now that he's an action star. He's an action star now. Yeah, but it, um, Quiet Place was great. He said that he would, you know, he came to New York, he was waiting tables and he was doing all these auditions. And then he said to his mom, you know, like, I'm going to, I'm going to give this up after a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. if, if, it's, if it's not working after like five years, I'm going to just say, forget it. And I'm going to give up. And he was like ready to do it. He was like already ready to give up. He's like, I'm going home. Uh, and he called his mom and said, Hey, I'm coming home. I'm giving up on this dream. And she said, give it two more weeks. And he was like, okay. And he gave it two more weeks. And that's when he booked the office. Wow. And so there he, he was just about to Never give up. Never give up. So <laughs> Get up, you son of a bitch. Because <laughs> Mickey loves you. Yeah. Don't give up until you yeah. croak. I got, I got a, a, a cool, you know, I always get those texts from robots or people or whomever. And, you know, like, I, so it starts, it says, are you working today? Mm -hmm. I'm Lin Lin. You're Sally, right? I said, no, my name is Abraham Lincoln, but I know who you are and where you live. She said, sorry, I may have typed the wrong digits and got to you. And then I said, I'm coming for you tonight. And then they responded by saying, I'm living in Los Angeles and you. And then I said, I'm inside your bathroom. Come look. I'm here waiting for you. And they just keep going. You know, that's how you know it's a scam bait or call. If they're not like at all put off by you being like, I'm coming over to your house tonight. Yeah. Did you hear about that Gothamist um, person got their sto phone stolen and they got like death threats? No. It's like one of the editor in chiefs of Gothamist got their phone stolen and then they didn't, they didn't, you know, untie their Apple ID to it, which mm -hmm. means that it's basically bricked. Yeah. She deleted everything, bricked it. They need the ID to sign in to remove it from their list so they can sell it. So they start getting all these messages from like, you know, hey, we're a service. We work with companies. We need you to help us unlock this phone. And then she didn't do it. And then they started like sending her death threats. They're like, listen, you motherfucker, you. I will fucking kill you. I'll come and kill your whole family. Did wow. you ever read The Gothamist? I did sometimes, yeah. Well, then you can see why this person would send so many threats to this woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's not like I'll be I'll be honest. I don't yeah. read the Gothamist often. Um, the last time I can really think of was years ago when Banksy was in town. You and ever they, read the they wrote uh, an Onion? You know the oh, Onion? I love the Onion. Similar. And uh, Hard Times. Yeah. Oh, oh. like Gothamist oh, Onion. Good. No, they thought my friend Gothamist thought my friend Ryan was Banksy, the little Sri Lankan kid. They were like, "Is this Banksy?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "He's just out there selling T-shirts." Although. That's a hustle because when Banksy came to town, our friends made T-shirts, Banksy T-shirts that said, oh, "I am Banksy." Smart. With the rat. It was smart because they, they made five grand in a week. What? Just going out and selling $20 shirts. People were so hyped on it. Yeah. It's fun. That's yeah, fun to I do. When I got my phone stolen recently, actually, I did get a text because uh, I had went through this whole thing, put it on lost mode, like disabled it. And uh, I got a text like not too long later when I finally got a new phone 
from a number in China saying, we have your phone. We've like bypassed all of the like things. I'm getting all your texts. Like, please disconnect before I put this on the black market. Right. And I was like, that's very sweet of you to let me know. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's and I did that. check my find my iPhone thing. And all of a sudden it was in like Wuxing, China or something. There you go. The like, gentleman wow. thief. They're stealing them and shipping them over. Huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. There's I, a site for it. That's fucked up. I want to support local criminals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I, uh, my, uh, Except the boy card. that stole my phone. Yeah. yeah, that's not good. My credit card number was was stolen once. I left my car to Alligator Lounge in Williamsburg like years ago. Mm. And someone had used it to buy two laptops from uh, Staples or Office Max. Oh, Office Max in California. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck? And of course, you know, they don't want to give your money back. You have to file a report. You have to do all this shit. Mm -hmm. And it was going back and forth for a long time, for like three weeks. And finally, I got someone on the phone from Office Max. I'm like, let me tell you something, okay? <laughs> Next week, I'm not going to have the rent. Uh -huh. Because of this, and my wife who's sick, and my three kids who are sick, You're lying through your teeth. When you walk by us in the street, are you gonna be the one to put money in my fucking cup? Are you <laughs> gonna be the motherfucker to put money in my cup when you see my wife throwing up in the corner and my kids crying with dirt and drool hanging off their fucking chin? Are you gonna be the I one to feel. put money in my cup? And, and I, I was way more intense than that. I can feel. I was from here. And he goes, "Give me one minute." Yeah. Within five minutes, I had my money back. Yeah. Okay. And I said, I deserve a fucking Emmy for this because yeah. <laughs> it was intense. He it's was like, he felt it. Like, right. he was like, oh, 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 hold on. Look, the squeakiest wheel gets the grease, is what they okay, say. So that the, is so true. The Brandon, more you are you going to be the one to put money in my Absolutely cup? not. But I might buy one of your collages because they're nice. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, other art news uh, one of the Fluxus. Have you ever heard of Fluxus? Do you know what Fluxus is? No, it's sounds not familiar. dirty. So Fluxus is like a <laughs> semi movement from the 60s that focused on performance and the creation of art as opposed to. Uh, you know, the finished product mm -hmm. and had some detractors, some friends who were, you know, a lot of, it was a group of friends who were really into it. Yoko Ono, I believe, was one of them, kind of counts herself among. Checks out. Or counts among that. And you might have heard this quote, though, because Ben Valtier, a French artist uh, from the Fluxus movement, who famously proclaimed everything is art, yeah, definitely. has mm -hmm. died. So he died at 88 today. Do you wow. feel that way? Do you RIP. agree with him? Do I agree that everything is art? Yeah. Mm, I don't like it's hard for me to go on the record and say anything about the definition it's a tough of art. One. I That's say a tough one. yes, but yeah. there is bad art. So They're you know, agreed. there you go. Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hear that. Everything is art, just not everything is good art. Yeah, exactly. I, I go okay. with that. I, that. I'm on the same right. frequency. Yeah. hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. I feel yeah. that. Yeah. I like that. I, I like that too. I do kind of feel that way just because, you know, I do I do stuff that gets called not art constantly. You know what I mean? Like all my, even my paintings are like, that's not art just because it's abstract expressionism. But I'm like, okay, it is art, but it's got this history too. Mm -hmm. um, but I also feel that strongly that video games are like the highest form of art uh, right now. Yeah. I think that because we like co incorporates everything that we've ever done. It's got painting, sculpture, storytelling, cinematography, mm -hmm. writing, illustration, you name it, it's in I there. I mean, even going exactly. back to early video games too, not just, yeah. Know. Now, you know, and they especially have to put the most work back in. And, oh, man. Yeah, they're mean, creating it. Yeah, growing exactly. up, you know, I was surrounded by a lot of uh, computers from um, I had it. My uncle had an Amiga, which you don't see too many of those. You right. had everything. Bro. You um, had literally everything. We can't. We, Atari well, we don't have ST. Time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it goes on and <laughs> we on. We don't have on. time to go through the list. What about you, Rebecca? Do you, did you play games growing up? Uh, Do you play yeah, any now? I play a lot. of. I'm having like withdrawals from my Switch, actually. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> don't have withdrawals from your Switch. What, what are you playing on your Switch right now? Uh, Zelda uh, Tears of the kingdom oh it's super that's not good. the newest one is it it is the newest one and i'm trying to that's where you build stuff yeah cool exactly and yeah. you like create all of your weapons from scratch and like even your arrows and everything it's like beautiful like i can't i catch myself taking pictures of my switch screen all the time like <laughs> you know my inventory is immaculate nice i play actually that's funny there's um i play genshin and um which you know i get endless shit for but i like it i don't care mm -hmm. uh there's actually like a camera they've like updated so there's like new camera features in there so mm -hmm. you can do in-game photography oh yeah you yeah. can like change the soft focus behind the character oh wow that's way more than mine it's so advanced it's like change the soft focus you can hide the character hide the controls like uh -huh. oh you know, that's like in, my, in zelda so too you can like do like a self-portrait mm -hmm. or you could do like of like in front of you. Right. And then they're like, upload it to our social media app immediately. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. But so is everything art? I don't know. But the person who said it died today. R.I.P. Fluxus. I also, really? you ever heard of the Flux Factory? Mm -mm. I don't know if they're still around. I feel like they were. They were something I would looked online before I came to New York. 
And I was like, oh, this would be perfect because they were advertising like a $400 a month room with like a bunch of what like year access was this? to uh, like amenities. Soho? 2007. 2007. Brooklyn. It was, oh, okay. it was still like in, in Brooklyn, but it was a big warehouse and it was called the Fluxus Factory. And I only imagine that it has something to do with this. No, not Fluxus Factory. I could just see factory. it now like... Yeah, was, like walking around with paint on them, like hitting the walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was there was actually a manifesto for this unmovement, but it's funny. It's like the article basically I was reading basically said they they made a manifesto, but nobody cared. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it must have been a pretty shitty manifesto. <laughs> I feel like most of them are. I feel like the only time you hear about manifesto is when someone like has to kill themselves for you to hear it. It's a big it's word, true. manifesto. <laughs> yeah, it's like a very heavy yeah, word, yeah. manifesto. And it's true. My I first thought was crazy. <laughs> it, you should create one, but then again, we're just saying my like my first thought when I hear a manifesto is like all those negative oh, she's things. She's planning to kill herself. Yeah, like it's like <laughs> something horrible, you know. Like you only hear about like mass shooting events and like right, you right, know uh, all this other stuff. You don't you don't hear many positive ones. No. Yeah. This is my short, beautiful poem called Manifesto. <laughs> there, there's a the cheap art manifesto from the Bread and Puppet um, Company. Bread and Puppet Bread and Theater. Oh, I'm messing that up. It's a great puppet organization upstate, and they have the cheap art manifesto. It's like art should be everywhere; it should be affordable. And do they always talk through puppets? They make they have huge, amazing workshops where you go create puppets and put on these <gasps> awesome shows. Oh my! It's where is it? Really what cool. part of New York? Uh, I will find out really quickly because that does sound. But while I look that up, exactly rather amazing. Actually, yeah. maybe we should go up there and make some puppets. But what do you think about art that. being should being cheap and accessible? I don't Rebecca. know about should be. Yeah. Like, you know, like there definitely can be and there should be some, but I don't feel like they should put everyone's art to that standard. Yeah, it's called yeah. Bread and Puppet Theater and it's in Glover, Vermont. There we go. Glover, oh, Vermont. So it's up there. Yeah, it's, it's up, up north. There. But Get they some doing cheese, a lot of make a puppet. <laughs> make it's everything puppet, good. Eat cheese, make a puppet out of cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you I just like start that. You know, combining everything. Just and then merging. when it turns like green and moldy, it's like the Statue of Liberty changing. Oh, you know? I like <laughs> this. It's an ever-evolving cheese puppet. <laughs> That's creative. <laughs> Love it. What else is happening with your practice? Are you uh, are you just mm. continuing at what you're doing and making more work? Or are yeah, you thinking I'm on stuff? Yeah, like, branch out into new stuff. So I had bought a bunch of clay off Temu because it was so cheap. I was like, where can I find really, really cheap clay? And I was like, mm, That's ballpark you got the clay? Did you get it? Yeah, I got Is it. it. Good? It's actually all right. It's like not like a one that you put in an oven, like in a kiln, but it's like a kind that air dries. Like Fimo? Yeah. And mm. it's like really fun to squish, honestly. So you're breaking into sculpture a little bit. Yeah, I had a sculpture before, but in a, the show that I was in, they had broke it, and then they refused to tell me. Like They oh, were like, no. I don't know what happened to it. And so I found someone that was working with them sitting on the couch, and I went up to him, I was like, do you know where that sculpture is? And he was like, oh, Mo, yeah, bring out the broken sculpture. Oh. And I'm like standing here with like my arms like ready to beat this man. <laughs> That, then, guy, that guy's the good one, though. The yeah. one who's like, hey, bring up the movie yeah, sculpture. Yeah. He's like, let's talk about it. Let's address it. I've yeah, had a piece stolen from a show a long time ago at Arlene's oh, yeah. Grocery. I, I oh, won't wow. say the artist's name who put the show on. But, um, yeah, oh. it got st I can't. I can't. You can't talk about it? No. <laughs> I have a Under really, No, I can. I can. It's Joseph Malloy. He's a good guy. Oh, Joseph's yeah, great. No, it, was, it was stolen from that show, and it was a really yeah. cool piece. Yeah, it his work small, is good. But I have been to Arlene's in forever. And I went to a show once. When you were doing platypus in a party hat, yep. mm. uh, he had Brandon had some amazing shows under that name. And um, a piece that I really liked at the end of the show, I was like, you know what piece I really liked? And I went to show him and it was gone. I'm like, oh, it must have sold. And you were like, that piece didn't sell. Yeah, you remember yeah. the bear? So this is, this is a good story, actually. So what happened was I had two pieces stolen out of that show because it was a really beautiful open like garage mm -hmm. thing. They had cameras, though. And so what I was able to do was I found the footage of the dude taking it off the wall and throwing it into his coat. Oh. I then realized who he was saying. I remembered from my memory who he was hanging out with all night. I couldn't find him on social media, but I found his friend. Uh -huh. Then I figured out, I found him eventually through his friend's mutuals and yep, stuff. Yep. And I, I sussed it out till I found the actual dude that I had on camera. Mm -hmm. I took the camera recording and I DM'd him on Instagram. And I sent him the video of him taking the art off the wall. And I said, hey... If you don't want to get charged with a felony, because this is like a $2,000 piece, I was right. like, if you don't want to get charged with like a felony, come and, you know, tomorrow, no questions asked, come to the gallery and give it back. Otherwise, you're going to be, you're gonna, I'm going to really fuck your life up, you know? And he did. Right. He showed up the next day and gave back. I was like, oh, I'm so drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, thanks. Bye. Get out of here. You know, right. yeah. I, I shoot don't him away as I recovered it. Else on the way out. A shout out to everybody who gets drunk. Keep your... 
Keep your hands in your pantaloons. Play yourself if you have to. Don't steal the artwork. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's people true. work hard to make these things. Do you have any shows coming up that we can come steal work? Uh, yours <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not now. She's not going to tell us where yeah, the show is. Smart, She's going to block both of us on social media. <laughs> yeah, we're screwed. Now we can never steal artwork for you ruined the whole plan. <laughs> Change oh, it to thieving man. time explosion. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you should be flattered and be like, well. You know, I, I looked at it that way. Too. I got I a piece like, stolen recently, and that's what they all said too. Like, oh, take it as a compliment. I was like, oh fuck, yeah, no. but that's the easiest way to suppress feeling like a fucking pile of shit after your shit gets stolen. You know? Yeah, but, but you know, yeah, absolutely not. I got a, a still. I got a um a bronze sculpture stole out of the trunk of a car in Oakland. And I, my first thought was that I was like, oh, at least somebody liked it because my dad hated it. At least somebody thought it was good. <laughs> and then I realized we're like two minutes, like a couple. Uh, blocks away from a metal recycling facility. Oh, and I was like, "Oh, that's where it went." He just went to get the forty-five dollars no. in bronze. It got melted down for sure, for sure. How Such did he a know bummer. What was in there? I don't think he did. He was like breaking into the trunk just to see what was in there, and then what? that was all. He's like, "What the hell is this weird demon?" <laughs> well, I already broke it. I'll just take this. It's metal, though. I can probably get. It. He probably was like shitting himself when he got it. You know, the right. fifty bucks out of Wee. that. He was like, "Wow." Oh, it's it's crazy it. that like people <laughs> yeah, around the world the with this one. <laughs> get electrocuted from stealing copper like oh. every day. Like yeah. I don't know the stats on that. <laughs> I should look it up. But Probably like a lot. you know, just homeless people. It's sad. You know, you crawling into attics, grabbing electric fucking wires, and what do you think is gonna happen? You're gonna be fried like a little French fry man. Yeah. What happened to Tony? <laughs> he turned to a French fry. He grabbed the wrong wire. I, I saw it happen before my eyes. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Uh, when I'll did, never be the same. Uh, when did you start making art, like painting? Oh, forever. It's just forever kind of ago. always been a thing. Like yeah. uh, in elementary school, I had this one art teacher, and I really like gravitated to art and her, and I kind of just kept with it since. And then she always made paper mache stuff, and I used to like eat the paper mache. Like, <laughs> really <laughs> <tasty>. shit. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, that's it good? awesome. It was I mean, good. Are you sure? It, it was tasty. It was like salty. It's like Mrs. Lippy in uh, <laughs> what you call it? Uh, uh, Billy Madison when um, when he, and she's eating the glue. She just oh, yeah, 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 glue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Miss Lippy. I did not uh, eat my art supplies. <laughs> I did weird things too. I mean, I, I used to do. like cover my hands in rubber glue and then go like this and oh, make yeah, balls yeah. of rubber and shit. Mm -hmm. My teacher was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" Oh, my favorite Ow. is when you Ow. layer the glue all over your hand and then wait for it to dry and try to peel it off in like one yeah, big but I'd skin. Be like sniffing it's kind of how they manually make a hash in Morocco too. They just kind of like roll the weed and it's like kind of just like palm skin and weed oil. Like oh, just in water. I haven't had good hash in a long time because it's all palm skin, skin apparently. Oh, there's people in Denver with like processors Yikes. I know, and then there's people in Morocco that that's the real regular. I got that hash has. from like a gypsy back in the day. <laughs> Some weird. You can't say that anymore. And it it's Roman. It's Romani. A, ro a magical Romani person. But what if they're not like Romani? I don't know. <laughs> I just want good hash, damn it. <laughs> good Lord. Well, did, you, anyway. did, did any of you guys ever see the movie Midnight Express? Uh, why did I think It's from the Express? 70s. It's about a guy, based on a true story. He goes to Turkey, and I don't want to say too much. It's one of the best, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Um, and he tries to smuggle a lot of bars of hash out of uh, Turkey. I won't say anything more, but it's if you want to see an epically amazing movie, you have to see that movie. Okay. Midnight Express. Yeah, putting it it's in up my there. List. Movie racks all day over here. That's right. That's all I used to do when I had the illegal cable box. I would just sit home all day. I tell my mom I'm sick. I mush up a bunch of food, throw it in the toilet. Tell her I threw up. She made a lot of pea soup, so that was you know it looked okay. like puke. She knew it wasn't puke. I threw <laughs> random shit like pieces of bread and popcorn. Like <laughs> clearly that's what I did. And my mom's just like whatever. And then I just watch movies on Cinemax, Showtime, HBO. You I mean, would everything. Oh so my gosh. Also about popcorn and corn. Like how do you? Masticate it and then it come out solid again. <laughs> you saying yeah. you poop out That's full true. popcorns? <laughs> <laughs> You're like a freaking popcorn machine. You're just like, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> like get ready for the movie. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and be right back. <laughs> yeah. Morgan, get the butter. We we got to go get, to the bathroom. <laughs> we we got to so, get out of here today. It time flies. It was a lot right. of fun. We should we gotta have go you back. Watch more movies. Tell, uh, tell them where they can follow you. Gotta make popcorn. I'll be back. Uh, so my Instagram is rbats r b a t z z, and you will not know me on anywhere else. Go check that out. That's the official Insta. Thank you for joining us again. We'll see you next time with a really exciting guest. Swoon is coming up. Woo!
Lucky time 